breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's time to take global stories making headlines in our national dailies. And joining us to review the papers this morning is Professor Kamilu Sani Fage. He's from the Department of Political Science, Bayero University, joining us from Kanu. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, and thank you for having me. Thank you. All right, so we'll be starting with the punch this morning, and it talks about hardship protests. It says, U.S., U.K., Canada, issue security alerts, traders fear looting. The writer here says, foreign missions foresee violence as federal government will be differ on protest sponsors. Now, um, this is also on other papers as well. On The Guardian, it says, protests will be named sponsors as CPPE warns of 400 billion naira daily loss to the economy. And on the business NG still talks about the protests. It says Tinubu begs, Wiki pleads, sends messages to Nigerian youth on protest. So let's talk about this protest. A lot of people have, you know, come out to express their displeasure with the current administration. Um, but aside people saying, you know what, we need to have this protest, the federal government or the government on the other hand, you know, has been saying a lot about the protests. In fact, um, the IGP now has, you know, issued certain guidelines. So many politicians have said, no, do not go out to protest. Um, a lot of people have called for patience, like the other of Benin has said we should give the government, um, you know, more time. The Yaloja, who, is, who happens to be the president's daughter, has even told the market women not to allow their kids to participate um, talking about how everything might just go haywire so we're looking at this and also seeing that the US the UK and Canada have started to issue um, security alerts and some traders are um, they fear looting right now can you just walk me through the potential like the dangers of this protest I know that people want to express themselves but what are some things to really look at look out for when it comes to the protests? You see, um, uh, on one hand, uh, it's true that uh, protest is constitutionally recognized yeah. as one means by which uh, uh, people will express their own views to the leaders. But, uh, you know, it should be uh, peaceful. Mm -hmm. But the problem is that uh, this one that is uh, about to... Uh, take place in Nigeria. We don't know that it will take place or not, but we have barely four days to the deadline. Uh, it's coming at the wake of uh, what happens in Kenya. You know, the protest in Kenya started peaceful, but somehow it went uh, haywire and it ended up in uh, violence. And because one, the way they government uh, tried to handle it so that is what sparked the whole process so that is why here in nigeria given what happened like in the past like uh, the end of sans uh, uh, protests and uh, the fact that uh, the police and the security agencies are giving serious warning on the issue and uh, the reluctance of the government to dialogue with uh, uh you know the, the possible protesters. Uh, one is fearful that uh, perhaps uh, even if it started um, uh, peacefully, some hoodlums might hijack it, especially given the fact that uh, there is high level poverty in Nigeria, there is high level uh, prostration and hopelessness among the youth. So some people might hijack it. So that is why there is this worries in so many quarters that uh, probably if it happens, there is a potential that uh, some people will hijack the peaceful process. So I, I understand that, you know, there are several concerns, especially when it comes to hijacking the protest. But at this point, shouldn't the government be having conversations now or the president even addressing us, letting us know that he's, he hears us, he understands our plight, understands everything that we're going through and things will be better. You know, that form of encouragement, that form of care from the president who happens to be the leader of the nation, shouldn't that be happening by now to be able to avert this protest, especially when, you know, we're not sure that it's going to go as peaceful as we want it to be? Yeah, you see, even if it is going to be, to be peaceful, that is what a democratic government is all about. 
A government, democratic government, is supposed to be to have two things. One, it has to be responsive, and two, it has to be responsible. So these are the things that uh, leadership should have shown. They have to be responsive to the people, like in a situation where we have these things, and uh, the notice has been out for how many weeks, and yet the government, instead of addressing the problem, you know, one, well, keep on denying it. Two, uh, keep on using all means to prostrate it. You know, getting people, getting opinion makers, religious leaders, and other things to, you know, uh, talk against it, uh, using threats somewhere, and uh, in other places, blaming, uh, you know, other people. So all this shows that... Uh, there is a possibility that uh, the, the strike will take place because the government has not been responsive to the situation. And I truly, well, that is what is expected of uh, a democratic leader. For long, you know, this could have been abated had it been the government responded. And, uh, you know, they, they, they have to know that they are democratic leaders and they have to know that there is that uh, this problem in the country. So people expect that uh, uh, the government should have done something. Uh, anyway, it is not too late. We still have about four days uh, to go. I think within po these four days, the government can head up the protests by showing a, a you know, true attempt to uh, you know, address the problem. But if they keep on denying, if they keep on blaming game and uh, nobody hears from the leader, uh, I think we are increasing the probability of uh, the protest to take place. Something that also might just be increasing the probability is another headline here that says fuel rises to 1,300 naira per litre as depots run dry. On the business NG, it says Nigerians lament as fuel crisis deepens. NNPC blames vessel hitch for fuel scarcity. So looking at this now, um, this was one product that was about 180 something naira to 300 and something to 500 and something in some areas, 700, 800. Now it's as high as 1,300. I only wonder how people are going to do business, how people are going to transport themselves to and fro work. Um, there's just a lot because this is an essential commodity. But what do you think this is? What do you think is going to happen now? Especially seeing that you know fuel has risen this much. And this is even in the same week where the protest has been scheduled for as well. You see, this will just add uh, fuel to the fire. Yeah. Already there, there, there is a tension. And uh, in, in the country is tensed. Uh, we have just, like I said, four days to the time. And then within this period, you know, there is uh, fuel scarcity. Like uh, yesterday here in Kano, most of the uh, fuel stations are, are locked up. And uh, those that are open, the few that are open, you know, the price is so high. And uh, this thing comes, like I said, the heel of uh, this uh, protest. And it comes up, you know, also uh, the heel of what happened like last week. Uh, we had uh, reports saying that uh, Nigeria is uh, still subsidizing oil, that uh, the landing cost is uh, over 1,100. And then, uh, through, through to the talk, now people are seeing that it is going up in that way. So I think it is a very dangerous story. These are some of the things that I'm saying, that I, I said that the government should have done, even if uh, you know, so uh, you know, it means subsidizing at least people where oil will be should be available uh, so that you don't add up to the anger of the people. And now you try to address other issues. These, these are all the measures that the government ought to do to head up the problem. But we are here uh, at a very tense situation. And so many things are happening. Now, already, you know, there is this problem of inflation in the country. There is problem of hunger. There is problem of uh, poverty. Now there is additional problem of scarcity and, and so on. So this will even push, even those who are on the fence, uh, on the issue of strike, 
this will push them into uh, taking side and it will be dangerous for us all. Well, I, I, this morning when I was driving to work, as early as 6 a.m., so many fuel stations were filled up with queues. People could not even access some fueling stations as well. And I just wonder what will happen because it's almost like you're driving these people to anger. So first they're coming out to say we want to protest because of hunger in the land. But now they're going to be angry because there's so many things that are still not working. And you are not saying anything as the leader um, of the nation. But I don't know what's going to happen. There's another headline here that says um, support Dangote. This is on The Guardian. It says support Dangote refinery to reduce petrol scarcity ex ndic md tells regulators um, on the punch it says only nnpcl can buy dangote petrol that is being said by eichmann so with this right of course dangote is a local um investor here in nigeria he has opened up a refinery even though there's been a lot that's been going on and he has you know said people are trying to sabotage his efforts um you know claiming that his his commodity or rather his products is substandard but with this shouldn't that tell us that if this is such an essential commodity isn't this where we know that we need to support our own to be able to reduce the price and do you even think that if that happens the price of fuel might just be better and more affordable to the people yeah you see yeah you see one thing in, in other claims if, uh, if uh, indigents like them but they come out, you know, the government support them. But here we are in Nigeria. Uh, in the past two weeks, we have been here in the, the battle, uh, uh, pro and against uh, uh, the issue. You know, Rangote is claiming, or you know, has come out to say that you know, he has been, he's been sabotaged about what he calls the uh, mafia, domestic and uh, external uh, mafia, who are doing that to sabotage the process. And now we hear also from the government side uh, saying that Rangote's uh, product is self standard uh, they are saying also that uh, it has not been licensed to operate these are also like putting a uh, spanner in the wheel of progress so i think it is uh, a dangerous trend you know, that uh, this thing is continuing otherwise uh, it being you know the the private uh, refinery is allowed to function to operate like you, uh, about three times it has been postponed, you know, that uh, the date of opening has been uh, postponed three times. And uh, had it been allowed it, and given the capacity <coughs> that the, 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 uh, the company will be able to produce, I think it is more than Nigerian needs, and uh, it is going to even uh, lead to our exploitation of refined oil to other uh, places. So if we could have more than our needs, that will definitely bring down uh, the cost. Even though people uh, who are against the, the whole exercise are saying uh, to now allow monopoly uh, to the will monopolize the city. So these are all the issues that are being thrown against the system. Already it has been, uh, you know, the costs have been sunk yeah, it has been uh, finalized. So I think there is no alternative but allow it to to work and to give it the necessary support so that um, uh, things will work uh, for in the interest of Ni Nigeria. But actually, to quote him, there are mafia within and outside the government that are outside the country that are sabotaging the process and which is not in our own national interest. Well, let's talk about the NNPCL. So, on The Guardian, it leads with two years after PIA, NNPCL struggles with over $5.3 billion, well, $5 billion um, dollar loans, joint venture debts, and commercialization. So, we're talking about the NNPCL. They're still struggling. So many loans, debts. What's going on? How do we, if we're saying that we're producing so much, of course we have a quota, right? Even though the World Bank has said the NNPCL has not been transparent because we don't even know how much um, they get. But how come we're still struggling with this much loans? What's going on? Is this just corruption eating so deeply in every sector and we're not doing anything about, about it? At what point do we call out the NNPCL 
to just be accountable at what point do we say what are you doing with this money or why do you have so much debt that cannot be accounted for you see that one, one thing in the oil sector and especially in the nncm uh, is the issue of corruption for long this has been the cries of nigeria we don't need imf to tell us we know what is happening the huge amount of money that is being guzzled by uh, the uh, institution and they have not been able to produce even one liter of oil Every year, every day, is issue of turn around, there is issue of high uh, salary and expenses. Yeah, you know, if you read back, uh, uh, these issues are awash. Our papers, our recent media is awash with all sorts of corruption in that place. So I think what uh, is happening is the fact that NSPCL is not able to produce anything and uh, is consuming money, and now is deep in, uh, in uh, debt. So we should have the political will. Uh, the government should have the political will to stamp in and uh, see that uh, NSCL is cleansing by uh, through the process of investigations and uh, you know whoever is found guilty uh, should be dealt with. But the fact is that there are sacred cows, there are people beyond, uh, above the law. So that is why they are doing what they are doing in the uh, uh, company, or whatever you call it, uh, with audacity. Because this shows the level of corruption in the institution with audacity that is being perpetrated by some people. And uh, unfortunately, they are in key position and uh, so that is why they go scotch free well it's unfortunate that our nation you know nigeria that you would have expected to have progressed so far um we're still dealing with corruption that is still just raising its ugly head there's another headline that says syrup sues cbn over missing 100 billion naira dirty notes um, and Sarah has been asking for accountability and transparency. But this is one organization doing this. How do you think the Nigerian people can come out and demand for what is rightfully ours? And asking this government, asking these people, these leaders, you know, to be accountable. How can we go about that? Yeah, you see, one way is we need uh, civil society organizations like Sarah to come out, you know, uh, and to follow uh, the heel of these uh, issues. Uh, secondly, uh, which is the most difficult one, that is uh, we need our leaders, the representative of the people, to now take uh, uh, the issue. But since most of them are involved in that process, they will not come out. So what is left is for the people and for, you know, individually and uh, collectively, to pay interest in, uh, to show interest in these issues. And uh, for it to work, actually, uh, even the judiciary, even though it is also deep in corruption, has to take that stand. When people, when the issues like that of Sarah are brought it, uh, they have to investigate. In other words, in a democracy, uh, docility is not accepted. It's not an option. Uh, both uh, civil society organizations, individuals, you know, uh, and other organizations like uh, student union, like uh, labor union, like uh, uh, lecturers, uh, uh, what do you call it, and many reasons uh, should go just beyond the interests of their members, but also project the national interest to protect like what us was trying to do like uh you know the, the doctors uh, association and others these are the ones that uh, have impact so they have to also take it as part of their mandate uh, to now look at issues like this and talk about it and where necessary they can even take the case like uh, what Sarah is doing uh, to the court so that uh, the leaders will be held accountable because methods of accountability are being baptized in Nigeria. The, the, you know, the constitutional and the democratic methods are being baptized by the leaders. So I think the electorate and Nigerians in general 
uh, have to show interest in the pushing for accountability of our leaders and the, and the government itself. I hope that we start to speak up, um, we, we start to demand for this because that is our power. And if these are leaders who are supposed to lead us, they need to lead us the right way. And that's what democracy is all about. Democracy is for the people, by the people. So you can't just, you know, do what you think is okay for you and neglect the people, neglect your constituents, neglect the citizens. So hopefully, um, you know, we get to that point where we speak up and then also um, where the government listens to us as well. Let's move over to Nature News. Nature News, um, there's a small headline here that says technology is germane for food security in Nigeria. And that's been said by one of the minister's aides. So, of course, we need technology. Of course, we need food. And how, where does food meet technology? How will the Nigerian government help be in this situation? Because right now, food is super expensive. It is one of the commodities that people can barely afford. And um, the protest that is about to happen is also looming because of this same food, because people are crying hunger. But how can the government harness technology and how important, how pertinent is it for them to look at this, um, to look at technology and ensure that we have food security in Nigeria? You see, one, one of the problems we have is uh, we still have subsistence farming in uh, Nigeria is the dominant thing. What we need is a uh, large-scale uh, farming in addition to the subsistence one in order to have a uh, the real food security in the country. And the government has a prominent role to play in this. It has to make it conducive, create an, an conducive environment where these things are, uh, will operate. And uh, okay, technology is not just the instrument that you use, also the input that you put into the uh, agriculture. And uh, what the government ought to do is to make uh, things affordable. You know, unnecessary taxation, you don't have to put it on uh, these areas. And, uh, you know, give all sorts of incentive that people will find it profitable to engage in large-scale uh, fund people, organization, you know, uh, and uh, even individuals, so that uh, if we now make it affordable, things will work. But uh, this penchant, this uh, issue that we have, removing subsidy here, removing subsidy here, increasing tax there, and so on and so forth, is counterproductive. So uh, even people who want to import technology and eat it or input it, it uh, they are finding it too expensive. So that is why we are just taking one step forward and a series step backwards in terms of improving agriculture. To me, I think the most important thing is for the government to create a conducive environment for large-scale farming. And like I said, some of the measures include you know, uh, taxes, uh, you know, then they avoid unnecessary taxation, uh, you know, so subsidizing uh, the input and uh, uh, technology that are needed, uh, allowing the uh, people to do that. And also, in some places, in some places, you see, uh, the government even uh, gets involved in the situation. Look at what is happening in America. America really subsidizes uh, agriculture, yeah. and uh, that is why they have food security in that place. So other countries, the developed countries in Europe, in Asia, and others, all support uh, subsidized agriculture. But here we are, we are not uh, subsidizing it, we are overtaxing it, we are also not encouraging people to go into large-scale farming, except for we give bourbon this in the commitment and there is no concrete actual support to uh, the issue. Hmm. All right, so finally, let's move over to the business energy. The business energy leads with Nigeria loses 95 trillion as 50 multinationals depart in five years. So we're looking at so many foreign investors that the president is even looking to come in but the ones that are here are leaving so many multinationals have departed in five years to the tune of 95 trillion and sometimes i just wonder how much is our budget again 
whereby a whole chunk that is 95 trillion is leaving this same nation that we're crying for foreign investors to come in to help with our revenue but what do you think about this what do you think about the business environment in nigeria how sustainable the economy is and so many things that that you know are derivatives of this same thing that is going on whereby the cost of business is so expensive and those multinationals have to pull out what do you think about this yeah, this is very dangerous, and this is, uh, you know, contrary to uh, the major policy uh, uh, position of the government. That uh, since uh, for long we have been concerned with the issue of, uh, you know, getting foreign uh, investment in Nigeria, and unfortunately the ones that we have, the uh, new ones have not come in, and the ones that we have are, uh, you know, parking and leaving uh, the country. And the reason is simple. Uh, we know the uh, uh, investors uh, operate in a conducive environment where they will gain. Why it is profitable to invest their capital. But what we have in Nigeria now is that, uh, that such environment is so hostile. One, there is high level of insecurity that we say. Two, the high level of corruption. Investors who uh, want to come in, you know, they, they are bound to corruption. And three, the high level of uh, taxation, uh, you know, unnecessary taxation here and there. Uh, for all, uh, there is also a high level of cost of operation. Okay, these are all the things which should tell the government it is high time you rethink on your direction. It is high time to retrace and go back and see what are the alternatives. But the way we are going is part of what is creating hardship, is part of what is uh, you know, driving investors out of the country. And uh, I don't want to sound like a prophet of doom. These are the things if we don't check, they will grind the nation to a halt. They will call it, grind it down. Because the economy will collapse, and there will be prostration, and uh, you know, uh, uh, poverty, and so many things. And that is why we are where we are now. People are trying to come out to protest. So that is one thing that I said about the government, a uh, democratic government, that it has to be responsive, and it has to be responsible. And uh, the way these things are, it uh, shows that uh, we are not acting like a democratic government where we know there are problems. We keep on saying that uh, we, there, there's a, a light in the end of the tunnel. But this is showing us that we have not even taken the right step to go into the tunnel, to enter into the tunnel, let alone walk through and see the light uh, outside. Mm -hmm. Well, hopefully there would be that light at the end of the tunnel and it would not just be wishful thinking or just empty promises or just things that we say. Hopefully in Nigeria we get to that point whereby we're all happy and we're all flourishing together as a nation. Anyways, Professor, I want to say thank you so much for coming. It's always a pleasure having a conversation and reviewing the papers with you. Thank you.